chapter five, what a great chapter. I think if, you know, the people that say they want revival in America, maybe they should read Amos chapter five. I mean, think if we could get every Christian in America to read this chapter, it would be quite a wake up call to look at what God hates and to see God's judgment, you know, to, to see and, and just mourn of the things that God mourns about. Uh, this morning, let's start in verse number 15 here. Amos chapter five, verse number 15. Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. Remember earlier in the chapter said they hate those that judge in the gate. But God here is saying hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of, judge, of Joseph. He's saying that as Christians, as God's people, we need to establish righteousness. We need to speak the truth. And to do that, you have to hate the wickedness in society around us. God commands us to hate certain things, and He hates certain things. Look at verse 21. I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. God says, I'm not going to receive this sacrifice. I hate your sacrifices, right? I hate your offerings. They're wicked. It's wicked abominations. This is what God is saying. Look at verse 25. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Cheon, your images, the star of your God, which ye have made to yourselves. He's saying, you've got the wrong God. You've got the wrong sacrifice, and they're going after Moloch. And if you know who Moloch is in the Bible, that's what we're going to look at today. Moloch, it was this satanic curse of killing their own children to cover up their whoredoms. And today we're going to talk about Moloch and the sacrifice of abortion and how birth control is a curse on America. And as Christians, we need to cry in the gate. We need to hate abortion. We need to hate the fact that it's legal, that it's allowed, that it's being taught to the next generation, that they're saying, just kill the next generation. Oh, you mess up, you do something you shouldn't, you don't want to be responsible for that, that thing, just kill it. And that's wrong, it's wicked as hell. I hate abortion just as God does. We're commanded to hate the evil and to establish judgment. They allowed it. God judges them. And that's what Amos 5 is teaching here. Look at verse 27. Look at the next verse. He says, Therefore, while I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Go to Leviticus chapter 18. The God of hosts, the God of every group of people, of angels, of everything. And so this was preached in Amos to Damascus. And he says, I'm going to carry you beyond Damascus. I'm going to enslave you. I'm going to judge you. I'm going to cut you down by 90%. You're going to be left but a tenth. Now, in the first mention, we're going to look at, the, in Leviticus 18, the first mention of Moloch to really understand what he, what he says here when he talks about Moloch and the star of your God. You know, that hexagram, the hex that is put on people. This is also mentioned in the New Testament. In Acts 7, it says, Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your God, Rempham, figures which he made to worship them, and I will carry you away. Beyond Babylon, that's that famous sermon that Stephen preached in Jerusalem, and he basically turned the guns on them and says, God will judge you and carry you away from here. In 1 Corinthians 10, he says, But I say, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to gods. I would not that you would have fellowship with devils. The first thing I want you to understand is when the Bible says Moloch, that is the devil. Moloch equals the devil, just as Baal is clearly Satan, and any other name, Chemosh or Chion, that or Rempham, that is Lucifer. These fallen angels, these gods, the host of heaven that they worship with their hand, the idols that they lift up, that is the devil. Any god other than the one true living God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is a devil. And so in Le Leviticus 18, God knew early on what they would do. Look at verse number 21. Leviticus 18, 21. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch. Neither shalt thou profane the name of God. I am the Lord. All right now, he said, don't pass your seed through the fire. The Bible is literally saying here, don't commit abortion. Thou shalt not abort your child. Don't kill your children. Why would God even have to say this? 
Shouldn't it be common sense? Shouldn't we know that this is a blessing from God? But he uses the phrase here to pass your seed through the fire. The Old and the New Testament uses a phrase of conceive seed. Right? You're bearing seed. What's that mean? Well, it's what happens when somebody gets married and God makes a baby. That's a person. It's alive from that very moment. The seed is from God and they were giving it to the devil. They were blessed by God and they were cursing the blessings that God had given them. In Jeremiah 1, he says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. God knows who you are when you were born. And God knows your beginning day to your end day. And we know when people abort their babies, whether it's in the womb or out of the womb, it's wicked as hell. It's a sin against God. Life begins at conception of seed. The child is alive from the moment of seed. And abortion is a major sin in the Bible. It's worthy of death, according to God. Now look at verse 22 in this chapter. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. God says abortion is just as wicked as being a queer. Verse 23. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie there. It is confusion. Whoa. Sodomy and, and, and bestiality and abortion. God says those things are an abomination. That's something God abhors, He hates, He wants nothing to do with it. He says in verse 24, Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these things the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Go to Leviticus 20. Listen, there is a promise of a blessing unless you reject it. God wants us to have children. And there are many people, saved and unsaved, that have made these mistakes. And they end up, and according to the Bible, it's like seeking another God. It's on par with one, a major wicked sin. And there's curses that come with it. No, look, thank God we serve a loving God, a merciful God, a forgiving God. Let's not forget that. But it's our responsibility to cry aloud and warn the next generation and tell our children how terrible abortion is and tell our friends and our family how wicked it is that it's literally the same as passing your child through the fire. Look at Leviticus 20. Look at verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Moloch, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. There is a death penalty for abortion according to the Bible. Look at the next verse. And I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Moloch to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. Said, how would you like it if God's face was set against you? God was determined to avenge that innocent blood upon you and eventually cut you off. Those would be bad days. That would be a miserable life to still be alive just knowing that God's judgment is coming. Look at verse 4. And if the people of the land do in any ways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth his seed unto Moloch and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go whoring after him to commit whoredom with Moloch from among their people. Hey, listen, if you try to hide your eyes and pretend it's not going on, it is wicked as hell. And here he compares it to whoredoms. Abortion is the result of whoredoms. You know, I, I went to the Trinity Baptist College to debate, if you will, for a lack of better terminology, with a Calvinist professor sitting down in front of a classroom of 60 children and explain to them from the Bible how Calvinism's wicked. And of course, he wants to go through all the, well, this, well, well so-and-so said, no, the Bible, open the Bible. I said, I'm still in, in Romans. Why don't you go back to Romans, right? And this guy, before all this debate started, I asked him, because he starts boasting of his works, he starts boasting of his past, he had been to Calvin Seminary, now he teaches at, a, at Trinity Baptist College, right? But he broke of how many children he has and I said well let me ask you this I said do you believe in birth control or do you believe it's a sin 
well, I'm, I can't really make a call on that. I said, what do you mean? Do you use birth control? Well, no, I mean, I've got a bunch of children. Okay, does the college teach that the children that go into the missionary field should use birth control? Well, yeah, so I can't really make a call on it. Right, what's, that man, as a professor at a Christian college, wants to hide his eyes from the fact that the establishment is saying, well, just kill your children. Oh, wane off on having children. Don't accept the blessing from God, and it's wicked as hell. And I believe God will judge that man. Look at verse 6 here, he says, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and have wizards to go a-whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. He, he compares it to having a familiar spirit. He compares it to going after a wizard. That's the same. I mean, abortion is a devil sacrifice. It is the influence of the devil to do a human sacrifice of your own seed, your own child, and put him to death. It's witchcraft. Look at verse 7. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter number 18. There are many times in the history in the Bible where you see God judging a nation because of their whoredoms and their idolatry to other gods that God cut them off. And the enemy uses that to try to attack God's people. Today there are many churches that are taking part in this human sacrifice that is demonic activity. Abortion is influenced by the doctors and the devils, and they want to kill your children. They want to kill the next generation. They want generations rising up and not reproducing. They want Christians not having more Christian children. They want to attack God's people. This is all by design. It's not by accident. It's not just a convenience. Because listen, having a lot of children is not, con it's not always convenient. It's difficult. It's hard to juggle children and raise them up and teach them proper things. That's hard. But you know what's easy? To just forget about them. To just not worry. Well, you know, that's not my problem. We'll let somebody else raise that child. Hey, why don't you just kill that child instead? And that's what the doctors and the devils want you to do. We as Christians need to fight against it. Not just take a stand in our personal life and praise the Lord that many of you have already, but I think we need to open our mouths and warn others also. You're in Deuteronomy chapter 18. Look at verse number 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord." And because of these things, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Do you understand what he just said there? If you kill your child, it's the same as witchcraft. Go to Genesis chapter 38. Genesis chapter 38. Don't learn from the people around you. Those that make their son or their daughter to pass through the fire is the same as consulting devils. It's the same as divination. It's the same as enchanting people. It's the same as being a witch in God's eyes. He hates it. He hates it. And listen, could, could you imagine if we found out that one of our brothers or sisters in Christ in the church was taking part in a seance or some form of necromancy where they're trying to call up some dead devil or some dead relative by playing with a Ouija board or something, you would say, man, that's wicked as hell. You need to avoid that. What are you doing? God will not bless that. God would curse that. Well, God says the same thing to those that participate in passing your child through the fire. Right? Passing your child through the fire is the same as being a witch or being possessed with a devil. And this is a big deal because abortion is commonplace, it's funded by our government, there's a lot of problems with it, and the Bible's clear. You know, in Exodus 21 it says, if men strive and hurt a woman that's with child, so her, her fruit depart from her, and it goes on to talk about whether or not it was intentional or accidental, right? He's saying, if, there, if men are fighting and there was an intentional act to try to kill that baby, then he says, you should give life for life. If you intentionally kill a baby, that is worthy of a death penalty. 
Listen, there are a lot of Christians that have done things worthy of a death penalty. Uh, you know, adultery is one. Abortion is another. Right? Maybe even murder is one. Thank God he forgives. And if, if you have taken part in something that's worthy of death, you need to count your blessings and thank God that he's merciful. And then move on and don't cover up your sin. Don't justify the sin. You need to warn others. To conceive seed is to have baby in the womb, right? But birth control, these days, they oh, it's just birth control. It's not destroying a life, right? They, it's just birth control. What do you mean by birth control? Controlling what God has mandated. Controlling what comes natural. And how do they do it? Well, they have the pill, right? Well, first they had the high-dose pill, and that was causing so many health problems in the women's, women taking it, well, they had to stop that. Now they have the slow-kill pill, where every month it's just killing different parts of your body, and then they finish off the baby. In Genesis 38, where you're at, I want you to see this. Look at verse number 7. And Er, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of God, and the Lord slew him. A wicked man, God judged him, right? He killed him. Verse 8. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed would not be his, and it came to pass, when he went into his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. You understand what happened? He's not allowing the natural process, and, and that's wicked. That is birth control right there. Not allowing the natural process that God has designed. Look at verse 10. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. Go to Psalm 106. So he said, well, I'll just do something different. I'll, I'll, I'll take it matters into my own hand. And God said, okay, I'll kill you for that. I believe birth control in the Bible, any form of it, is wicked as hell. And God judges that. And some of them are temporary, some of them are oral, some of them are, you know, there's all these different methods. And listen, thank God that he is forgiving. Thank God. But, you know, we need to take a very serious attitude against this. Any form of it is a wicked device of the devil. Something that the devil dreamed up to try to stop Christians. There are many born-again Christians that have given their children through the fire to Moloch. Just knowingly go down and get an abortion, knowing that they're going to put a scalp, they're going to cut up a baby. It's wicked as hell. We should weep. We should mourn. We should just sigh and cry. We should repent. We should tell others to stop and choose life. Again, thank God for forgiveness. Thank God that He's patient and long mercy. His mercy is long suffering. In Psalm 106, where you guys are at, it talks about how they were angering God. Look at verse number 35. But were mingled among the heathen and learn their works. And they serve their idols, which were a snare unto them. Verse 37. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. Unto devils. Can you imagine? Can you just visualize what was happening at this time? Holding a precious baby. Handing your precious baby into the fire. Can you visualize how wicked it is? A soft, sweet baby cooing at you, thankful for the life that it has, and you put it into the fire to a devil. That's what the abortion clinic is in America. Look at verse 38. And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Those babies were not given a chance to live. They have no chance to live because you want to go and be a whore and try to cover up your whoredoms. That baby had, no, these babies had no choice, no joy of childhood. You know, and that's, oh, it's the woman's choice. How about the baby's choice? Shouldn't the baby get an opportunity to have joy in life and grow up and enjoy a childhood, to become an adult, to develop talents, to choose to serve God? Every life deserves those rights to serve God. Verse 39. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. You know, in Egypt, they invented birth control a long time ago. They had all sorts of strange things they did, and almost all of them caused major health problems later in life. They defiled with their own works. They went a-whoring with their own inventions. Verse 40, Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against His people, insomuch that He abhorred 
his own inheritance. Go to Hosea chapter 9. Hosea chapter number 9. God was so mad that he hated his people. And I believe that we all know Christians that are partaking in birth control or justify birth control or justify abortion. Well, they were out of marriage. We, they, we told them they should have just had an abortion. Why? Just get married. Or worst case, just raise the baby. Give that baby a chance. Listen, we're the watchmen of this generation. That's our job, is to speak up. It's our job to preach and warn others. Will you cry aloud and warn this next generation? Will you tell them that God calls abortion murder? You know, will you tell them that the Bible teaches that life begins at conception? That birth control is the same as witchcraft? I mean, these are strong things. Can you imagine having this conversation over the Thanksgiving turkey with your family? How have you been? You're not on birth control, are you? You realize that's the same as worshiping the You realize the devil wants to stop you from reproducing. The devil wants you to live a life of whoredoms and not have a family and not be blessed. It's wicked. It's destructive. Don't do it. Don't go down that path. It's a curse on a whole nation. It's hard to tell the ones that we love that it's wicked, but it's right. That's what the Bible says. We shouldn't give our seed to Moloch. Look at Hosea chapter 9. Look at verse number 11. As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird from the birth and from the womb and from the conception. He's saying they're going to lose their glory. God's going to judge them. Verse 12. Though they bring up their children, yet will I bereave them that there shall not be a man left. Yea, woe also unto them when I depart from them. Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus, is planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. That's abortion. That's having a baby and taking it to the murderer. Killing a child. Verse 14. Give them, O Lord, what will thou give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. Go to 1 Kings chapter 11. For those that want death, God will give it to them. Those that say, well, we have some that we, that we let live and we kill the others. God says, I'll even take the ones that you let live. I'll take them from you. I'll curse you because they've cursed God. It's sad. I mean, it's like it's literally cursing God's blessing. God wants to provide a blessing of life and instead you curse God. He will curse you. The Bible says children are in heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is His reward. I believe birth control of any form is, is like abortion essentially whether it's from the knife or the kill pill you know it's promoting a whoremongering lifestyle we're going to look here in first kings 11 at solomon's curse on his family on his children because of how he was living and it was a curse really even on the on the children that survived but many of his children were aborted look at first kings chapter 11 look at verse number three and he had 700 wives princes and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. Now, I believe he had a queen, and then he had princess, and then he had the concubines. A concubine, in the Bible, it's a wife taken of slavery, or maybe even of bondage, or taking a handmaiden. So, I think he, you know, he took them as a wife, but you know, the Bible says not to multiply wives, and he knew that scripture. So he was already in sin, and because he was in the flesh, maybe he thought, well, you know, I'll just make him my wife. It'll be okay. Look at verse 4. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Right? These wives, these concubines, these people that he knew in the flesh, took his heart, they destroyed his spiritual life. Verse 5, For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build in high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Now, you remember, what, what, did, he say, what did I read earlier? It says, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice unto devils. Not unto God. 
So when he, he knows these things, when he builds an idol to Chemosh, when he builds a Moloch for his strange, unsaved wives, he knows these things are for the devil. And it's wicked. He's in the flesh when he does it. Look at verse 8. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto gods. What do you think they sacrificed unto gods? What do you think they were sacrificing? I mean, what did, what did they sacrifice to Moloch? Solomon's children? The king's seed was being killed, passed through the fire unto the devil? I mean, this is witchcraft. I believe the devil is using every method he can to destroy not just all human beings in general, but I think especially the king's seed, God's seed, the righteous seed, the remnant. Look at verse 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned away from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. And he had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. So he's saying, I made a promise to David, I'd give you the kingdom, so I'm not going to take it from you. But you broke the promise, you destroyed the opportunity, you cursed your blessing, and now your children are being killed by the devil. Go to Ezekiel 23. Ezekiel 23. There was a curse on his household because of his whoremongering. Because he couldn't control himself. Solomon's curse destroyed not just the children that went through the fire, but you know the rest of the story. It destroyed children in his own lineage that were alive. Ezekiel chapter 23. Find verse number 37. That they have committed adultery, and blood is in their hands, and with their idols have they committed adultery. And have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. The whole purpose is to destroy that life to the devil. Moreover, this they have done unto me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbaths. For when they had slain their children to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And lo, thus have they done in the midst of mine house. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 9. This is a pretty major offense. Again, the Bible is clear. It's worthy of death. Life for life. Anyone that passes their child through the fire unto Moloch should be put to death according to God. Listen, God judges nations that kill their children for the devil's sake, that allow that influence. And again, man, thank God that he is forgiving. Thank God that he's long-suffering. I know Christians that have committed abortions. I know Christians that have or are using birth control. And, you know, God forgives. God gives an opportunity. But what should our response be? How should we respond? Well, let's go down and protest the abortion clinic. I don't think it's going to change anything. I don't think standing out front with a sign won't fix anything. I think that's something they do to keep the Catholics busy. I think there's other methods. I think it's spiritual warfare. What should our response be? Weeping and mourning, preaching and warning others, being vocal about this abomination, telling them just how wicked it is, warn about Dr. Moloch's abortion clinic and what birth control does to the human body and what it does to the babies that are being born. You're in Ezekiel chapter 9. Look at verse number 1. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, calls them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in hand. Now this is a vision that's being shown here to Ezekiel, and I, uh, it's some end times prophecy, I think, and he's showing some judgment of God about to come down on this city. Verse 2, he says, And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. 
and the glory of God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereof he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink horn by his hands. So you understand what's happening? A group of men, six men come in, and there's a total of seven. They're coming in, and God says, these men are going to destroy. And there's this other guy, and he's going to go through and mark everybody in the city whether you get a checkbox or not. I want you to see this. I think this is very important. I think there's symbology of what happened then and also what may happen in the future. Look at verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of the city. This should be our response. What is our response to the witchcrafts of abortion? What's our response to Halloween? What's our response to the wicked music of the world and the movies? Well, it ought to be that we sigh and that we cry. I think first we cry to God for help. I think we need to cry to others to repent. Cry out and warn them and tell them. And not go along with these ab abominations. Sighing here is like in the spirit. That's hating the evil. That's just being grieved at what you see, what you're surrounded with. So the people here that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Again, this is a heart thing. God looks at the heart and He says, these people hate what's going on. These are the ones that are righteous that will be preserved. Look at verse 5. And to the others He said, in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. Can you imagine if, if God came down and judged like this Trinity College out here? and all the ones that went along with the abominations and weren't really saved in their heart, and they allow abortion, they preach abortion, they tell missionary kids, go ahead and get on the pill. Can you imagine if God came down and said, start in my house, start in the place that's called by my name. Let's start in the churches, and anybody that won't stand up for abortion, they need to be judged first. It's a pretty strong statement. In 1 Peter 4, it says, For the time will come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And this is why America is so bad off, is because the churches are not preaching righteousness, especially on abortion. Verse number 8, And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and of Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. They say, God's not going to judge me. Or they'll say, Well, only God can judge, and that will happen one day. God's not going to stop me from what I'm doing. In America, the churches especially, they, they might give lip service to abortion, but what about birth control? American churches are full of hypocrisy. They'll take birth control, they'll take the kill pill, but they, oh, well, we, we don't, we'll go down and protest the clinic. Well, stop taking the kill pill. Stop letting your children get on the pill. That would be righteous in God's eyes. The land is full of blood. The city full of perverseness. How many churches in America allow open fornication in their teen groups? It's disgusting. It's wicked. It's whoredoms. It's whoremongering. And God's going to judge it. God sees it. Look at verse 10. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. God says, don't worry, I will get them. Their day is coming, and I believe that those that uh, go down and commit an abortion, there's something physically that changes in their body, and God judges their body. I believe those that take a pill every day, every week, every month, destroying their guts, God will judge them. He'll give them a miscarrying womb. He'll give them dry breast, and that's God's judgment. I think those things will come to pass. I think it's righteous of God to do it. And yet I know Christians that are partaking in it right now. They, oh, that's not giving your child into the fire. That's not going along with Moloch. Yeah, well, that was Moloch's plan, and you're following Moloch rather than God's plan of having children. 
We're commanded to hate the evil and love the good. We're commanded to establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of churches. I believe churches in America need to stand up against birth control and abortion or God will judge them. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for the life that you've given me and thank you for the lives that are in this church. Lord, thank you for all these children. Lord, I pray that you would bless us with more children and I pray you would bless us with wisdom and boldness to know how and when to speak up against birth control and abortion. Lord, I pray that you would help protect our nation against the witchcraft.